Welcome to the Pearls and Polish Podcast, episode 41. I'm your host, Rachel, coming to you from just outside Sacramento, California. This is my little corner of the internet where I talk about different things I'm knitting, uh, books that we're reading, movies we're watching, whatever else we happen to be up to. Uh, so I'm so excited to spend a bit of time with you and talking about these things. So if you're a new viewer, welcome. If you're a returning viewer, welcome back. Uh, you will notice if you're a returning viewer that our setup is a little different. Um, I am in my kid's room, hence all the stuffed animals. Um, but everyone has short days this week for school. So I needed some place where I could close the door and have as little like outside interruption as possible. So kids are downstairs watching a movie, happy as clams. I'm excited to be spending some time with you finally recording an episode. Uh, it's been a minute since our last episode, but we are here. Let's talk some knitting. Let's start with our finished objects, our FOs. So I have four to share with you. Now these are all for the knit along being hosted by Denise of Earth Tones Girl. And it's called the I Love Books and Sock Knitting Knit Along. It's kind of a mouthful, uh, but it's just, you read books and you knit socks and that's kind of it. There's, I think there's some prizes, but the most like important part is reading books and knitting socks. So there's a whole series of posts on Instagram. I talked a little bit more about it in last week's episode. So I will tag it up in the cards above so you can check that out. And of course, check out Denise's page um, and her videos as well. So let's start. Um, so I have three pairs of socks that are from Sock Blanks. Uh, again, check out last week's episode if you want to learn a little more about that. But the short version is there is a machine called a circular sock machine, uh, sock knitting machine. And so it's like this cylinder and it has a crank and you just kind of crank it and it makes a big tube and then you put in your heels toes and caps and you see a lot of them like those cranking knitting machines at like joann's or or michael's or any sort of craft store to make like hats so it's the same idea but they're smaller and for the most part they do have metal parts like metal pins and stuff so they can be very expensive uh, i believe there is a company who's doing them out of like 3d printing but I haven't heard a whole ton about them. I would love to own one of these someday, but today is not that day. Anyways, so when I have too much in my stash that I know I'm not gonna get to work on and I need to make some space, I send these off to be made into these tubes. And then later I go in and put in the heels, toes, and cuffs. Well, it's been a minute since I pulled one of these out to put in heels, toes, and cuffs. So this knit along has been great in that I now am putting this as a priority because it counts for the knit along. So this sock is not inspired by a book as far as I know, but it is inspired by a movie, which is like close enough. It's close enough for me. Uh, so this is Chihiro and No Face. That's the name of the colorway. It's dyed by La Ben Ami based out of Paris, France, um, and it's based off of two characters in the movie Spirited Away by Miyazaki. It's one of my favorite Miyazaki films, um, but I love this colorway. I love how just bright and vibrant those like neons are, and then the deep, deep black. Um, and then there's actually like some really deep blue in there as well. So as you can see, I did put in the cuff in the same color I put in the heel with a black and I did that with intention. Um, as you guys know, I love a heel flap and gusset sock because I need a little extra room in my like heel and step area. Uh, I have some really high arches, so I just need that little extra room so it doesn't feel like my sock is pulling too much. So I found a way to put in like a little gusset right here when you're doing an afterthought heel and it works pretty well for me. So I can still do an afterthought heel, but still have enough room in my instep for my sock. So I wanted to do that with this, but I didn't want to use this stripey color because the colors would warp and you can see that in the toe. So here's the toe and all I did was just kind of rip back until 
the right amount and then put in my toe. And you can see how the colors don't stay like nice like here. They get kind of warped at the end. Now this doesn't bother me as much because my socks are usually in my shoes. Um, so like it doesn't bother me that much. I could have gone in with black as well. Probably for all three, I definitely had enough to do that, but it was okay. But I didn't want that in my heel. I really wanted to preserve the colors as they were and have that look nice. So I haven't sewed in my ends and these have been done for at least two weeks. I just got really lazy. So I have ends to sew in for four pairs of socks. I still have another two I haven't blocked yet. I have a lot to do over spring break. But that's my first one. The next one is Starry Night by Machete Shop. And again, not inspired by a book, but is inspired by a painting by Van Gogh's Starry Night. And this one I used the colorway throughout the whole sock. So I ripped back some and knit in my cuff. So this is 25 rounds of two by two rib. Uh, again, put in that heel and you, you might be able to see that a bit more um, with this gusset, it's right here and then went in and put in my toe. Um, this color is absolutely lovely. I love the way that it kind of stripes and pulls at the same time. Um, so using the same color throughout the sock was not going to be much of an issue as far as color pulling. So love that. Also need to sew in these ends. This pair of sock, this pair of socks, I have one sock, not the pair. The other one is in my room. Uh, this one is inspired by a book. So this book is called Miss Rumpheus. Yes, it's called Miss Rumpheus. Uh, she's also known as the Lupin Lady. And it's this book about, it's a picture book about this woman named Alice Rumpheus. And she lives in the state of Maine. And as a child, she tells her grandfather, I want to do two things. I want to live by the sea when I'm old and I want to see the world. And her grandfather says, that's wonderful, but you have to add a third thing to your list. You need to do something to make the world a better place. And it kind of follows her story of how she grows up and she goes and she does these things. She travels all over the world. She ends up retiring back in Maine and lives by the sea. And the way that she makes the world a better place is she plants lupin seeds all over her community. And now it's just lupins all over the place. And so I love this book so much. My kids love this book so much. Uh, my husband and I both have backgrounds in books. My husband was a bookseller for a major bookstore for many years and then I worked in libraries for many years. So over the time we have collected children's books that just are special to us, um, not necessarily to my kids. They're now special to my kids because they're special to us. So those books stay in our room above our bed. And so it's kind of like a big deal to pull one of those books off the shelf to read to my kids um, because they're separate from like their picture. So this is one that my husband had and it's just one of my favorites. So Rachel of On The Round, she's also based in Maine and she made this colorway inspired by that book. And when she had the colorway out years ago, I loved it and I missed it. I think she had just retired the colorway. And so I wasn't able to get it. And then she brought it back for a short time and I jumped on it and got the color. So excited to finally have these socks done, mostly done since I haven't woven my ends or blocked them, but so that I can have my Rumpia socks to be able to wear. So again, 25 rounds, two by two rib, using the same colorway. Same colorways used for the heel with that little gusset and the toe. So the one thing I don't really care for in this like sock tube knitting is that it it's fast, right? The majority of your time that is spent knitting, which is on the foot and the leg, is taken up by this machine. However, when you use the same yarn to do the heels, toes, and cuffs, it's crinkly because it's been knitted up in a sock tube. So it doesn't look as finished or as nice, even without blocking it. And I'll show you my last sock that I knit the whole thing um, as an example. But the toe, I don't know how well that's gonna show up. It looks kind of crinkly. The heel, I think you can see more, looks kind of crinkly. Same with the cuff. 
Um, now, as I block that and as I wear them, that's all going to kind of even out. But for now, since they're not blocked, um, it's just one of those things like, uh, it doesn't look as nice. But that's okay. <clears throat> this last sock is also inspired by a book. This one is called um, What Excellent Boiled Potatoes. And that's a quote from Pride and Prejudice. And this one is by Nomadic Yarns. And she does a self-striping yarn. So the yarn is dyed to stripe like this. And this one I did knit the whole way through and I feel like it just looks neater because it doesn't have that like pre-crinkle to it. Um, so what I ended up doing is I took the whole skein and I wound it up into a cake and then I weighed it. And then I split the cake into two and I'll show you that in a second. Um, so I had equal amounts. So my socks are almost identical. So I was going to do kind of like a short row heel with a gusset and decided not to because I have six color repeats in this yarn, which means if I were going to do like a, like some sort of gusset with short rows, um, the colors would distort pretty bad in the middle. Some people don't care. I cared a little bit. Actually, I care quite a bit. So I would, did not want to do that. So instead, because I had center pool balls, I just pulled from the middle and got yarn and did my heel flap and gusset. And I just continued on so I didn't break the color pattern and it didn't like warp the color too bad here in the middle. Um, and that I was okay with. So lovely yarn to work with. Um, I love nomadic yarns colorways I have at least two more of hers I know for sure I have one maybe two um but yeah I really enjoy her colorways so there is that are all those ends woven in no absolutely not will they get woven in at some point yes so once all these are woven in and blocked you're gonna have a bombardment of finished object pictures but those are all done Next, whips, works in progress. I have one that is actively in progress and two that will be in progress at the time that this video is published. So the one that I have in progress is not a sock. I know. So I knit a lot of socks, mostly because I need something portable. And as much as I love sweaters, they're not super portable because um, I'm going from like here to taekwondo, to a meeting, to whatever. And so I need something that I can pick up and put down quickly. So that's why I have a lot of socks right now. This is a hat. But with this yarn, I didn't necessarily want to knit socks. Um, what I really wanted was a hat. And I really wanted another Musselberg hat. I have two. Uh, one is purple, and it's like a real deep, beautiful purple. One is striped, and I feel like that wasn't enough kind of in my repertoire. I needed another one. So this colorway is called Reflection Pool, and hopefully that's pulling up because from my computer, I use my computer's monitor, that looks pretty accurate. It's like this deep blue-green color. Um, when I try and take pictures, it pulls up more blue or more green, but not like that perfect combo. It's like the perfect aqua not even aqua like teal I don't know how you would describe it but this is one of my colors that I what is going on here that I really enjoy uh so this one is by Sarah of Craft Me Not Yarn Co there's her label I love that chicken with the yarn ball uh the green sweater that I have that I wear quite often is from Craft Me Not. So this is her conservatory winter box from 2023. So Sarah, instead of doing like a traditional advent, she does a winter box. So you can open it whenever you want. Um, the last two years I have gotten it and I love it. Uh, the one that I get has four skeins of yarn. There's usually a mug and other items that are made by other small businesses that I believe are all women owned and run. Um, 
so she just announced the theme for this year. Um, I don't remember what it is, but I remember I really loved it and I'm definitely going to get it. So if you have the funds for an advent, but you don't like traditional like 25, 21, whatever, mini skeins, I would go with Sarah of Crack Me Not because it's, it's beautiful every year. She puts so much thought and effort into it, but also it's not like holiday themed. If the holidays that we celebrate in December aren't really your thing, um, it's just a great way to kind of wrap up the year. So I've been saving this since 2023 and I was like, I, I need to use this, but I need to use it for what it's really for. And what it really wants to be is a hat. So here is my teeny tiny Musselberg. Um, I started it like two days ago, got the crown done in one day, and now I'm just knitting as much as possible. So I had originally hoped I would have this done by tomorrow. Um, clearly not going to happen, but it's been a nice kind of refresher from socks. Still small enough where I can take with me just about anywhere. Um, very easy to pick up and put down since there's no like actual pattern work to it. So I just sit and knit. So where's my little pin? Here's my pin. Um, that's how much I got done from this, let me turn it this way, from this morning. So that's about, about two inches. So I was up at 5.30. I got to knit for about an hour this morning before kids got up. And then I had about 30 minutes before kids got out of school. So, I mean, that's pretty good. We're trekking along. So really love how that's going to turn out. I'm very excited to be able to wear it. Probably won't wear it this spring uh, since it is warming up quite a bit here in Sacramento. So it will have to wait until the fall, but that's okay. So that is my first work in progress. It is actively getting work. The other two have not been started yet, but they're already bagged up and ready to go. And the reason for that is I'm going to be traveling tomorrow. Um, so I wanted to have this all ready so that I can just take them and go. Um, but I will talk about travels in a bit. So first is this one. So this is by Woolberry, which you guys know I love Woolberry and their colorways. This colorway is called We Got There in the End. And it's on their Berry Cozy Socks. So 80% Superwash Merino, 20% Nylon, 400 yards, 100 grams. Um, so this is from their Book Society, like, club. And if you're not familiar with Woolberry or their Book Society, definitely go check them out on Instagram. They have beautiful work. They're based out of Colorado. It's a husband and wife team and their staff. And this year, they decided to do a book, like a book club, but yarn with a book club. So you get the box and you get the book. And it's a book that Bethany picks out. And she reads the book and then she makes four colorways based on different scenes in the book. So this is one of the scenes. Um, I believe this is like how the book ends, but it is this really nice green. I don't know if that's going to pick up super accurate, um, but it's kind of like a dusty, dark green. Um, so I really liked it. Um, I was trying to figure out what I wanted to make because I didn't really want a hat in this color green. I love this color green, but I didn't want a hat in this. Um, so I thought this would be great for a pair of DK weight socks. And you guys know my go-to for a DK weight sock is the high desert socks. So that's what I'm making. However, the high desert asks for two skein, mini skeins to go along with your main skein. And I have a trillion mini skeins. So I went digging and I found these two. I believe these are both from the same collection. I believe these are both Woolberry. Um, and I want to say it's from May. I want to say it's their Downton Abbey collection. Maybe, maybe not. Who knows? I didn't keep the labels. I just took them all out of their like packages and just stuffed them in a box. I don't know how wise that was though. Um, but this is what I came up with see if that works. And I think that's going to work because 
you hold the green double at all times. So sometimes you hold the green double with itself or you hold the green double with one of your contrasting colors. So I am gonna adjust the pattern a little bit because you use one mini skein for your cuff and then there's some striping. So you do like the cuff color and then a little bit of this and then the cuff color. And then you use this color for your heel and toe. But then this one like barely gets used. So what I'm gonna do is use this, probably this one for the cuff and the two main colors on the stripe. And then you use this one for the other stripe and the heel. And then we'll see where we're at with the toes. But I love a DK weight sock. I love the high desert socks. Um, I've knit other DK weight socks and I liked them just fine, but I like these ones the best. So that is one of my projects while I've been traveling. The other one is some more self-striping yarn. This is the Aquarius colorway by, um, where's the label? Freckled Whimsy. So this was part of her Zodiac collection. For 2023, she had uh, a colorway inspired by the Zodiac of that month. I don't really follow like astrology and like Zodiacs and whatnot. So I don't know a whole ton about it. I do know I'm an Aquarius. I don't know what that means, but anyways, this is her Aquarius colorway. It came out last year and I didn't get it and I was very upset about it. So it came out again as a pre-order and I got it. So this one I have already split up into two skeins. So each of these is like 52 grams. When I weighed the whole skein of yarn, it was actually like 104 grams. So I just split it in half. Now, there are 12 mini colors in each like color repeat. So I thought a lot about it of how I wanted to knit these up and I decided these socks are gonna be sisters and not twins. So I'm gonna start them in different places. Um, so this one will probably start somewhere around pink or right after the pink color. This one will start after that blue color um, so that they just look similar, but they'll not be an exact match like these ones were. Uh, just because trying to manage like the 12 stripes was going to be a bit much. She also added in this colorway. This is the mini. So I'm going to do the cuff and the heel in the mini. And then we'll see where we're at for the toes. So I'm going to knit these at the same time on separate needles. So I'll do like the cuff on both of them. Then I'll probably do probably most of the leg on one and most of the leg on the other one. And then I'll do the heel flap on one and then the heel flap on the other one. And then just go from there. So I'll just go back and forth. But I'll also be working on that as I travel. Um, we are going to be flying. So I haven't decided which one is going to be like my on-flight project. Probably, I don't know. Um, our flight is about four hours. So I mean, four hours, I can get quite a bit done on a DK sock. I could probably get through the heel flap, if I'm being honest. Um, but I could also get through, like, the... I'll probably start at the cuffs tonight on all three of these. But I could at least get through half the leg on two socks. I don't know. I haven't decided yet. This may be a last-minute decision. Or I might change my mind, like, right before we get on the plane. We'll see. Uh, but those are the three projects that I have kind of planned for next. Um, the hat has no deadline. These don't really have a deadline either, to be honest, but that's what I've got. All right, acquisitions. Um, so I did get an acquisition from the last time that I recorded, and it is called Bewitched, and it's by Woolberry again. I'm part of their yarn collective. So it's like their yarn club. So every month, Bethany puts out two colorways that is exclusive to the yarn collective. And if you're in the yarn collective, then you have exclusive rights to these colors. You get to pick your base and how many you want. Um, there's like a certain dollar amount that's included in your subscription and then anything over that you pay, but you get 10% off and free shipping. And that includes any of your, any other 
orders as well and you get like an hour early of shopping on their collections so there are lots of perks i don't think their collective is open just yet but when they do open up i will announce it on my facebook page not my facebook page on my instagram page uh and here on the channel as well but this was a colorway that was exclusive to the collective um now i did want to talk about how i manage my stash uh, my stash is small enough where I have a picture of every item in my stash saved on my phone. So as soon as I get an item, I take a picture and I put it in one of a couple categories. I have sock tubes, sock yarn, any sort of yarn set. So like three skeins that kind of go together or that were bought together uh, and then sweater quantities. So I have a picture of just about everything in my stash. And then I also keep a list here in my knitting journal of everything as well. So as I finish projects, it gets highlighted in the planner. So that's like the first two pages. You will see some blank spots. I left those intentionally so I could add more colors. And then the next ones. Um, and then I delete the picture from my phone because I do try and put pictures on Ravelry of like what the yarn looked like when I got it versus what it looks like when the project is done. And the only time I can remember to do that is if I already have the picture done. So I've gotten into the habit of taking the picture as soon as the yarn gets here. And then that way, if I put the yarn away before I do an episode, I have something to show you and I don't have to go dig it out. So there's that. Uh, I would love to hear how you guys manage your stash. Do you have some sort of like catalog? Do you just pick whatever and just get excited when you find a new colorway over again? I would love to hear about that in the comments. All right, so what we're reading and watching. Uh, I'm reading Lee Bardugo's Crooked Kingdom. It's the second book after um, Six of Crows. It's part of her Grishaverse series. Really enjoyed it. Uh, I have read it before. Uh, but I did want um, to kind of read the whole like world series at once. So I already read the Grishaverse, like the the Shadow and Bone series. And then I haven't read um, the other two that's more focused on King Nikolai. So I wanted to read them all the way through before I started those two. So the other book I'm reading is Uncle Tom's Cabin by Harriet Beecher Stowe. So that was part of my classics book club that my husband and I do together. Um, it's kind of become classics book club with food themed by the book. So we've read, um, what were the last couple of those we've read? We've done Emma, The Little Prince, Anna Karenina, um, The Scarlet Pimpernel, Dune. I don't remember what the last one was. Um, but this one is Uncle Tom's Cabin. Now I'm gonna be honest, uh, as a lit major, I never had to read Uncle Tom's Cabin. The only real reference I have to it was from the musical The King and I that they mentioned this book. So it is set in the American South during our time of slavery. Um, so there's a lot of like grains of salt to take with this book and just that the language reflects the language that was used at that time in reference to people that were in slavery. Um, so I kind of have to like put myself in the right mindset to read this book. So I've been kind of putting it off, but it's just like, I need to just read it and be done. So what we're watching, um, things have kind of gotten like, we haven't found the right thing yet to watch. My kids just finished watching The Last Airbender and the cartoon, and they really enjoyed that. Um, I have not finished yet the live action show of The Last Airbender. I saw the movie years ago and did not like it. Um, just because the cartoon just did so much better. Um, but this version of it I think is a lot better than the movie from years ago. But obviously it's not going to be as good as that cartoon. Um, but we've been watching that and that's been really fun to, to watch with them. Um, so yeah. But as far as like stuff I'm watching my own... Not a whole ton right now. All right, life updates. Um, obviously I 
have not been here for a couple weeks. Um, I know we skipped a week because I had, I think, a work commitment. I had this big uh, fundraiser for work. The fundraiser went really well. Um, and then I got sick. So I actually got sick right before the fundraiser. It was like a cold and allergies kicked up at the same time. So I ended up losing my voice. Um, so even last week, I was still struggling to be able to talk loudly enough to be heard. Um, and then also I would just get these coughing fits, which I'm still kind of having, but I'm not sick anymore. I think this is just allergies. Everything is blooming here in California, which is great. But we have all these little white trees around that have these little white blooms that are not native to California and they put off so much pollen and it's absolutely miserable. But anyways, so thank you so much for hanging in there while I kind of recovered and got my voice back. Um, I really missed hanging out with you guys last week, but we're back. Um, what other things do we have going on? Um, so we got a puppy over the weekend. Um, our dog of 13 years passed away in February and we knew we are a dog family, at least one dog, if not more dogs, but we are a dog family and we really did not like not having a dog around. Um, so we wanted to adopt a dog uh, from a rescue group and I you know, would have gone with any dog. My husband really wanted to do a puppy because our girls have not had a puppy before. We had dogs before we had children. Um, so they've always grown up having a dog, but they haven't gone through that puppy stage before. So we wanted to do it at least once. Um, and then as they get older, you know, if we ever get another dog, we could adopt a dog that's a little older. So we had talked and agreed as a family that we were going to start looking until like this summer. However, right when you when you just look to see what's out there, you find things. And so we found a foster group in Sacramento that specifically focuses on pregnant mom dogs and their puppies. And they pull these out of rescue groups and foster them in homes and then, you know, put them out for adoption. So we found one that kind of met all of our household criteria. We do live with my in-laws and my husband's grandmother. So there are lots of opinions about what the right dog for us is, um, but we were able to find one that fit what everyone was looking for, just about. And so we have a new best friend. Her name is Sabine. She is a poodle schnauzer mix, as far as we know. She is two months old and super cute, and we have really been enjoying having her as a part of our family. So you will probably see her around. Right now she is watching movies with my kids. Um, but it's been great having a dog around again. It's also been a little exhausting because she's a baby and it's been a while since I've had babies of any sort. And so it's like, oh yeah, you don't sleep throughout the night. You know, you put everything in your mouth. You need to go outside and potty many times a day um, to teach you like where it's appropriate places to go and where or not. So it's definitely been... A little stretch but it's been great so it's so nice having a dog again um, and then like I said I'm gonna be traveling um, so I'm actually recording this episode a couple days early I typically record on Fridays but recording this on a Wednesday because I fly out tomorrow um, so I'm going to a class with a friend of mine from work and we're going to another city and having a great time meeting up with some friends um, and we're going to take a class and learn stuff. So thank you so much for hanging out with me. Um, I know we had a lot of like stuff to catch up on. So next week's episode should be a little less, but we'll see, right? No promises. Um, I'm so excited to have spent some time with you. Thank you for spending a bit of time with me. I will see you guys next week. If you haven't liked and subscribed yet, please do so so you know anytime we put out a video. And I will see you guys next time.